Morna Simeona developed self-identity through Huaponopono from the Hawaiian traditional wisdom. She introduced her method of problem-solving and karmic cleansing at the 1980 Huna Research Association Seminar in Hawaii. For the next 10 years, she continued to refine her 12-step Ho'oponopono and traveled many countries to give these precious teachings to the world. Who is Morna Simeona? We all know that she was a great teacher, but it also makes one wonder why Morna was qualified to be given such profound wisdom and insight. First of all, she was taught directly by God how to heal people when she was only two years old. She was guided by God, the I or divinity, throughout her life. She was always obedient and fully committed to the I. Morna was born with tremendous psychic abilities that made her one of the greatest mystics of our time. She could easily have been a master of occult teachings. Instead, one of her missions was to turn the traditional Ha'oponopono wisdom, which was privy only to the Hawaiians, to a practical and universal application, and to give it to everyone on the planet. At the Huna seminar, Morna talked about her early career as a healer, and how the Hawaiian goddess, Hina, had guided her. Hina is the goddess of the ocean and the moon. She is the goddess of fishing and food plants. Let me explain that when I was young, I learned to do the process of broken bones. At the age four, my mother used to do it too. And it's written out in a book by Rodman, sorcerers and kahunas. And anyway, he had written it in a certain fashion, but uh, my mother used to do it too. But I, the, the process that we did was we had herbs that were planted uh, a little separate from the other because we used that herb by itself. And next patient comes, we use this herb, but we never see our patient, rarely ever. So I would run out in the yard and do our prayers. Now the prayer, as has been brought out in the, uh, some of the other speakers have brought out about ku and hina, which is the negative positive polarity. We must establish a name, a significance, and identity. So identity was ku for the masculine and hina for the female. So that created the action. Without the negative, you have no action. So, so I, the process that was given me was through a dream. I was helping my mother with her method. And finally, in a dream, I had hina, or the goddess of hina, and came to me and said, I don't want to use that leftover. So I said, what do you mean? said, that is someone else's process and it's a leftover. I'd like to give you something of your own. So what is that? He said, water. The media of water. Whether you image it or it's real in a glass of water. So the process that gave me made it easier for me than to go out in the yard, pick the plant, and come back. And my mother was the proxy. And she was Mr. Jones, Mr. Smith, and so forth on down the line. Well, my neighbors would look over and they would see me. There goes those kahunas again. And it used to bother me because their thought forms were so potent that they were like little hooks, fish hooks. And the pain remained for a whole month. And I thought, my God, do I have to go through all this all the time? Someone comes for healing, we have to do this. So I devised the method. So I'd wait until it took that time to go in the back and come back. And I noticed there were some fronds, grass, uh, what you call, growing alongside of the, uh, the edge of the sidewalk. So I grabbed that and I used that as a proxy, as a substitute for the herb way back in the yard to save me from getting all these negative thought forms. So I did that for a year and a half. And finally, my mother looked over the window, and then she saw me standing. She said, what are you doing? And then I told her, well, I've been doing it for over a year and a half. She said, well, that's sacrilegious. You should never break the rule. I said, well, I couldn't help it. But I feel, you are Mr. Smith. Are you truly Mr. Smith? You're only a proxy. Why can't I substitute that herb with the grass? Because they're all God's creations. So from then on, I was on my own. In a 1982 interview with the Honolulu Advertiser newspaper, she said God came to her in the form of prominent Hawaiian gods. Kane, Lono Q, Kanalawa. In Hawaiian mythology, Kane, along with Q and Lono, created the universe. Kanaloa is the god of the sea and sailing voyages. She said these gods talked to her and gave her the teaching.
She also said, from the age of two, she understood that the thundercloud, the ocean, the mountains, even the blades of grass, were part of God. As a little girl, she learned that she had the power to heal. Morna's healing career continued into her adulthood. She ran two health spas at the Kalhala Hilton and Royal Hawaiian Hotels at Waikiki Beach. In his book The Kahuna Sorcerers of Hawaii, Past and Present, Julius Rodman wrote a first-hand account of Leinani Melville being treated by Morna. Melville is the author of Children of the Rainbow, The Religions, Legends, and Gods of Pre-Christian Hawaii. In 1971, Melville had a third heart attack and a compound hip fracture. He was treated in a San Francisco hospital. Shortly after his discharge in October, he flew to Honolulu to seek treatment by Morna. He was treated for two weeks in Morna's health spa. His conditions were so bad that Morna told their mutual friend that don't be surprised if you have to take Melville back to California in a coffin. We will do our best to save his life. Evidently, Morna did save his life and healed his back injuries. In his final session of treatment, Morna personally gave him a massage for four hours. When it's done, he offered to write Morna a check for $40. Morna laughed and replied, For you, Leinani, there is no charge. I regard you as a friend, not a customer. Will you please accept this, my gifts, instead of fragrant flower lays? The flowers wilt and lose their perfume. My gifts to you are health and life. Fifty years ago, in 1921, Melville had an infection in his arm for almost a year. He was scheduled to have his arm amputated. He went to mourn his mother, Lilia, who was a well-respected kahuna laau kahea. His arm was healed overnight. He asked Lilia how much would she charge for her healing. She replied, there is no charge. God gave me this healing power as a gift, he did not charge me. I cannot charge you because you are a friend. During his two weeks of treatment by Morna, Melville had many talks with her. She had a small spiritual group in Honolulu. Melville said Morna testified that she was taught a great deal by her mother Lilia in her final years. Morna said she also learned a great deal by observation.